I chose this topic because I've been interested in vulture culture for about four years now, which is an online subculture where people practice bone collecting and taxidermy as a hobby. Last summer, I found a moose skull in the woods, so I decided to take it home with me. I wanted to clean it to put it in my room, but I never did. It's been sitting in my basement ever since, so I thought it would be interesting to clean it for the masterclass project. This video is some footage from the day I found the skull. The first vocabulary word is tissue, and this will refer to any type of tissue, so like muscle tissue, brain tissue, and even tendons. The second word is bug box. A bug box is a box in which you place the bones you want to clean, and then you put the box in a wooded area or in a forest and you let bugs clean it for you and eat the flesh that's remaining on those bones. The bones are placed in a box so that animals cannot run away with them. It's a pretty lengthy process since it's a natural form of decomposition. The third is maceration. This is referring to cold water maceration, which is the act of soaking bones inside lukewarm water with the laundry detergent to degrease it and to soften the tissues or the flesh that is left on the bone. The fourth word is cooking, which refers to hot water maceration, which is simply the act of boiling uh, the bones in water to soften the tissue and the flesh that may still be attached to it a lot faster. The fifth word is bleaching, which can be misleading because it only refers to the whitening of the skull, for which you should never use bleach because it will deteriorate and hurt the bone tissues, so it will make the bones very soft and leave them very damaged. You should only soak the skull in a mixture of water and hydrogen peroxide to bleach it. Today I will be teaching you how to bleach bones. First of all, you need a plastic container big enough to fit all of your bones inside. After, the, after that, to start the maceration, you need to fill it with water and laundry detergent. The laundry detergent will help to degrease the skull and clean it up a little bit before you start removing the tissue. This is what my moose skull looks like. It's pretty big, pretty dirty, there's a lot of dirt and tissue left on it. So it looks pretty gross and it's also pretty stinky. It smells really bad. This is a closer look at the skull. As you can see, it's pretty grimy, uh, it's dirty, there's a lot of dirt on it and inside of it as well. There are a lot of crevices that will need a good cleaning. This is the jaw. As you can see, the gums are still attached to it. It's the brown part near the base of the teeth. Here I'm simply putting uh, the bones in the container. And this is what it looks like. After that, I will make sure that the skull is fully submerged under the water. Here I'm putting the lid back on the container and adding a sheet on top of it to contain the horrible smell. After about 18 hours, I check up on the skull and this is what it looks like. It's really gross, the tissue has absorbed a lot of water and it's starting to come off. So I brush off the dirt with a toothbrush while still keeping the bones in the tub. The dirt will just wash off into the water. This is what it looks like after the first soak. All of the brownish, purplish bits are actually tissue 
that have absorbed the water and are becoming soft. As you can see, I can move them with my finger. These are the gums. And this is also part of the gums that's starting to detach from the bone. These are the tools you'll need to remove the tissue. So tweezers, scissors, pliers, two brushes, any other um, hard bristle brush and preferably a small knife, like a scalpel. I didn't have one, so I used a nail clipper. I start by vigorously brushing the skull with a toothbrush to remove some of the weaker tissue. Then I take my pliers to thug on the tissues and to remove the gums. It actually takes uh, quite a bit of force to thug the tissues off and the ones that simply won't come off aren't soft enough yet so you'll need to soak the skull again to get them to come off. This is all the tissue I was able to remove today. After that I put the skull back in the container and start the maceration process all over again. Don't forget to put the lid back on the container to avoid making the whole room smell like a carcass. After letting it soak for 7 more days, I decided to remove the skull from the container to remove more tissue. This is what it looks like. As you can see, it's a lot more clean than last time, but it still needs a lot of work, especially with the internal tissues that still need to be removed. The internal tissues from the eye sockets and the nose area that are connected will come out in big chunks. This is all the tissue I was able to remove today. I also removed the teeth from the extremity of the jaw to make it easier to remove the gums. I let it soak for 4 more days before deciding to remove some tissue once again. This time I focused on the area connecting the head to the neck. There is a big hole at the base of the skull where the spine used to connect. This area needs to be cleaned thoroughly since that's where the brain used to be. To bleach my moose skull, I decided to let it soak in 12% hydrogen peroxide mixed with water. I put one gallon of 12% hydrogen peroxide in a, I'd say, 10 gallon container because 12% is kind of a high-ish percentage to bleach bones and I wanted to dilute it a lot to make the bleaching process a little longer so that way I could check up on my skull and make sure it wasn't deteriorating. You could see the bubbles on top of the water, that means the bleaching process is working properly. I finally took the bones out of the container and this is what they look like after the bleaching. It's normal that the whiteness isn't even on the bones and I quite like it, it makes them look very natural. The horrible carcass smell is completely gone which I'm very happy about. And yeah, I think they look really pretty. If you wanted whiter bones, you could let them soak in the mixture for longer and dilute the hydrogen peroxide a lot less than I did. Now you know how to bleach bones properly. Fun fact, to end this masterclass, when I found the moose skull, the two parts of the jaw were positioned in a way to make it look like the skull had horns. So yeah, I might be cursed now, but it was totally worth it. <laughs>